Nice to meet you finally in person, Chris Roberts. Thanks you for too. coming down today. Thank you. No, fun to be here. We're at RSA 2019. Yep. Um, so just wanted to get a little bit, uh, pick your brain about what's going on in the cybersecurity industry, what's working, what's not working, um, a little bit on your background. Where are you working these days? So I'm over at Ativo. Uh, my official title is Chief Security Strategist over at Ativo Technologies. So a whole bunch of fun stuff with deception. A lot of defense and deception stuff going on at Ativo. A lot of defense, a lot of, de a lot of deception stuff. And then I'm fortunate, I, as even starting in there, I'm allowed to go mess around and do some advisory for some other fun folks. Okay, great. Okay, well, we're looking forward to your advice today. Thank you. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier and you were saying companies are developing ideas on the fly a lot yeah. and that sometimes we see in this industry marketing departments and kind of smoke and mirrors going on yeah. coming across as making these promises that don't actually pan out. So there's so many vendors in the marketplace right now. There's so much competition. What does this mean and how do we find out what's really going to work? You know, it's tough because in some ways you need the competition in the market. You know, if you've got a vertical, we'll pick deception as a good one. If you've got a vertical of deception and there's only one company in it, well, that's either great or it's terrible because it means it hasn't borne that market out. You want organizations in there, but the challenge is you want organizations that can deliver effectively and I'm just going to say, oh yeah, we got this covered. You know, what do you want? Oh yeah, we can do that. Ah, oh, we can absolutely do that because they can't bloody deliver on the promises. And there's it's so a little many... dishonest. Well, yeah, and, and money, the yeah. challenge is, is what happens, and we've seen it in so many different markets. We've had it in the antivirus market, we have it in the endpoint market, and what you end up with is you have so many organizations go, well, hang on, they just said that. Oh, we better say the same thing. Uh, and so one marketing team is chasing another marketing team is chasing another, and all of a sudden this whole buzzword bingo thing turns up, and what was once something where one company was like, hey, we've spent so much time and effort to figure this out, everybody else jumps on the bandwagon, makes a promise that they can't necessarily deliver on. And you end up with, you know, 1,200 vendors. I think we've got 700 here of which maybe 50 of them can deliver on what they say they can. So we've got all of these companies working on some of the same things. For example, something that I hear a lot about is password security and password storage. Yeah. What should we be doing different? I think a lot of different things. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm very fortunate on the Ativo side on some other stuff I'm working on that I'm able to throw that crystal ball out maybe five or ten years and some of the stuff I'm doing research on at the moment is cognitive work. So I've got a pair of glasses like this that have got EEG monitors built in and I'm able to pull data out of the brain that relates to maybe a phone or to a computer or a module in the car. And so rather than building another band-aid onto like two factor and you've got to build a band-aid onto that one or because you've got six different systems you've got to build four different solutions for the bloody things fundamentally we will need to take a step back and go how do we fix the problem how do we fix passwords how do we fundamentally take that step back and go we need to fix the problem not make different password stores or safes or tell people they have to remember 16 character passwords, which nobody ever does. That relates to all sorts of different technologies in this space, though. I mean, patches and fixes oh, and yeah. band-aids. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. Antivirus yeah. is, you say, broken. Um, well, yeah. I what mean, should I'm, we be doing different there? Well, I mean, so this, one, we shouldn't be hanging our hats on it. I think it's, you know, what, what was antivirus is now endpoint protection. And you're like, okay, what's changed? Well, we've given it more intelligence. Well, what have you done? Well, we, we make it more intelligent on how it finds stuff on the computer. Well, congratulations, you've taken an antivirus that does nothing more than match signatures to a heuristic system that matches patterns and outlooks, but it's still an endpoint system. We still don't know where all your endpoints are. You're telling everybody you can fix the problem. Yes, you can be part of a solution. You're a part of a jigsaw, but it's not something and it's not the be all and end all of everything. And again, that's one of the challenges. Marketing says, oh, put endpoint on and all your, all your worries are forgotten. Just kind of layer, stack it all up and it'll all work out. Yeah, but it's stacking it up intelligently. Uh -huh. It's going, hey, you know what? We do need some kind of an endpoint protection, whatever it might be. But because we don't know where all of our bloody endpoints are, we need something that actually understands and can learn our environment better than an endpoint can. Great, now we need to get eyes on the inside of our system. So some kind of event monitoring, logging. And we also know that somebody's always gonna be able to get in because we can always get somebody to click something or somebody post something. So somebody's always gonna get in. So that's when you look at the deception and then how do we tie that into a much more effective framework? Rather than just throwing more shit at the problem and more money at it, 
Why don't we do it in an organized way? Well, why aren't we then? If that's not happening, what is happening? Okay, you've got 700 vendors all out there going, ah, oh, we, can, we can solve everything. Now, some of them are doing it properly. Okay. Some of them are saying, hey, we fit into a framework. We're building, we're fitting into like the NIST framework or the OSA or the MITRE ATT&CK framework or any of those other ones. Well, without naming names of any companies necessarily, I mean, what would something like that look like? I, I think so. I'll take, I'll take a Tivo. I might as well because I know our stuff fairly well. Absolutely. And so from that standpoint, we go, okay, what are we trying to solve? Great. We know what we can do and how we can work. How will that help a company? Rather than going, hey, I just want to sell something because I want your money. Right. How do we actually change you? How do we help you actually go from where you are to become more mature? To go from a reactive, oh, hell, the data lost into a much more predictive, proactive, so you change the symmetry. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about our industry, our industry has been really about building up red teamers who do nothing more than break shit. Mm -hmm. What we need to be doing is going, let's give the blue team as much help as it humanly possibly can. And that's not just the blue team from security, that's everybody from the developers, the operations people, the users, the managers, the leadership. It's us going, how can we help you? Right, and not everyone who works in cybersecurity has to be a red teamer or no, has to know the code in the No, we don't need right. any more of them. Right, what do we, we need? need enough to keep them, we need enough red teamers to keep the, the industry honest. Yeah. What we need to do is arm the blue team, help people actually understand, we're always going to get in. There's nothing that's ever going to stop us from getting to computer number one, nothing at all. So the challenge is, is once I'm there, how does somebody realize it? Is it a better management tool? Is it a better single pane of glass? Is it a better framework? Is it a better risk response? And then before you even get to that, how do we train the humans? Yeah, well tell me about the human factor in all of this because it's not all computers, it's also oh, human mistakes. It's all, com it's all humans. People it's all who humans. are corrupt, right. people who are bad guys but pretending to be good guys. I mean, what do we do with the human factor? The human, the human factor is huge. I mean, it's, there's two arguments, well actually there's two schools of thought. You've got school of thought number one, which means you know users are down here at the moment, let's train them, we can raise the bar. But you'll never be able to raise the bar up to a complete point of protection. We're humans, we make mistakes, that's what makes us partly human. So we can do a lot more on the training. It's, it shouldn't be the once a year, don't click shit, don't send shit. It right. really does need to be that. It's you know, the way a bunch of us are now talking. Mark Miller is a great example. He runs DevSecOps and Sonatype, amazing guy. But it's one of those where it's like, you know, it's January. Yeah. Don't click on the PDF from the tax company. It's February. Don't click on the Valentine's card because nobody on the internet loves you. And you build this kind of repetitive, continuing education, and all of a sudden you teach the human to be safer. Not secure, you teach them to be safer. More educated about the risks. Right, exactly. So you've done that, and you've done it in a language they understand. Now let's take this entire 700 different companies and distill it down so that the sea levels can understand. Let's go in and talk their language. Let's talk risk. Let's talk money. Let's look at their 10Ks and help them understand what's going to change the business. Not what can the business do for me and how much money can I get out of them, but how can I help that business? A very, very different shift. Same thing with middle management. It's like, what do you need? Well, I need statistics, I need metrics, I need to tell the bosses I'm doing good, right. and I need to measure how successful this technology is. So you take a piece of technology, the deception stuff, and you go, hey, you know what? I know that when I put deception tech in, when I put the Ativo stuff in, I know that it's going to affect the MITRE system this way, the OSI model this way, the NIST model this way, and all of a sudden, now you've got something measurable rather than just throwing another piece of technology at the problem and going, hey, we can fix it. Well, the C-suite likes data, so that's helpful. Definitely totally. in order to measure the yeah. success versus failure of those. But it's a messaging thing as well. I mean, you really, I mean, from the industry standpoint, 25 years ago, we ran into the C-level's office and went, oh, we just need a firewall. It'll fix all the problems. D different now. Yeah, 15 years ago, we walked in and went, oh, we need IDS, IPS. It'll fix the problem. 10 years ago, it was DLP. Five years ago, it was Thread Intel. We're not going to fix the problem. It's not going away. Yeah. The bad guys, the attackers, the criminals, whatever you want to call them, not the hackers, that's us. The bad guys know that this is a cash cow. They're not going away anytime soon. And anytime we make a chess move, they make another move. So it's again, that education. This isn't something that's going away. This is how can we continue along this journey as a single entity, not two or three or four different pieces of the company pulling in a different direction. A little bit more universal, less siloed, more communication. Yeah, exactly. So 
we are heading into so much new technology. Yeah, yeah. Look at all the vendors here. Yeah. Look at all the new smart devices and everything, self-driving uh, cars that could be hacked, for example. Yeah. So we've learned, are we learning from our past mistakes? Are we prepared for the future of what's to come? <laughs> we are not learning as fast as we're developing the technology. Gotcha. Let's just, let's start with the easy one. We've got, what is it, 6 billion-ish people will be online by the turn of 2020. We'll have 26 billion apps and devices and uh, devices out there where I think there's like several million apps and stuff like that. So we're definitely not keeping up on that side. Hence, there's not enough of us to break everything. So a lot of it's going to come down to how do we work effectively with like the DevSecOps movements and the DevOps movement. How do we effectively team together with everybody inside IT and outside of IT? Um, you know, the autonomous cars is, is one perfect example. I mean, we've had this. We hear this, about it a lot. So. Oh, yeah, and we've been breaking them since 20, 2009, 2010 is when we started. But like Rob and Casey and all those other guys have been messing around with them since 07, 08, 09 timeframes. Now the industry is suddenly going, hey, how can we better protect? And some are better than others. You got a couple of other companies in Detroit and some out of Germany and Japan that are doing a good job, and you got some which are absolutely still terrible. Fit Chrysler Group, perfect example. They ignored it until Charlie basically showed how to drive a Jeep off the road. And then they were like, oh, we should probably fix that now. Yeah. So Why? what's it going, I don't want it to end up in a loss of human life, but it is ending up in that area. I mean, it, this it, is it, ser as serious as physical crime yeah, and I'm, people's safety. I mean, should we be looking at cybersecurity instead of just- safety? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, right. perfect example, probably not the best one for film, but we'll use it anyway. Very good friend of mine, a random man based up in Canada. He has been looking at adult devices and how they're connected to Bluetooth and wireless and everything else. That's not hacking anymore. That's a human thing. That's basically sexual assault. Right. That's, there have been a few articles about oh yeah. this that I've seen and that's, recently. That's not good. Yeah. I mean, you're still hacking something, but that's not good because that's now affecting a human. You start Absolutely. looking at pacemakers, you look at insulin pumps, you look at all the embedded tech. Um, the stuff that we've been working on for like stitches and stuff like that in sure. arms. The ability now to influence a human through a computer system, we're getting there and we're five, ten years away before it's even more embedded. Very scary. And yet we're still worrying about passwords. Yay! Yeah, I mean I was just talking to a gentleman earlier who was the victim of a SIM card um, fraud. Yeah. And basically people are getting either bribed or tricked using social engineering into giving some sort of authentication that the, the bad guy needs yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden he was out a million dollars. Yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's horrendous. And the problem is again because we've put so much into the technology, our lives are there whether we like it or not. Our lives are, are held now on our mobile devices, our phones, our portal, our computers. That's where our life is, whether we, for the most part, whether we like it or not. Someone has your device by using a SIM card, they can just put in the second, you know, two-factor authentication and they're yeah, in. Yeah, and it's game over. So it's really not that much of a level up. No, it isn't. And so then it's like, We're okay, kind of past that do we point. add another Band-Aid to it? Do we add another Band-Aid? Or do we fundamentally take a step back and go, how do we fix this problem? When do you think that would happen? I, What's your prediction? My prediction is, unfortunately, is it's going to take mass human loss of life. And I hate to say it that way. Yeah. But humans, I mean, think about humans. As we grew up as kids, what did our parents say? Don't touch that because it's hot. What did we do? We touched it. Yeah, we were like, woo, it's a little hot. Yeah. As we're teenagers, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other. What do we do? Woohoo, and off we go. As adults, we're looking into the abyss. I mean, you start looking at where we are now. We are teetering over the edge of a pretty nasty abyss. And arguably at this point, I think we have to fall in before we understand how to recover back out of it. Do you see any kind of lawmakers or regulators helping this cause? Not really. I Do mean, you think they could? No, because they're too wrapped up in their own red tape. I mean, we have had PCI for 15, 20 years. We've had HIPAA for almost as long. We've had FERC, we've had NUG, we've had SOX. We have all these regulations that's really good for the audit industry because what happens is the auditors now go around and now Did you, you have, check your box, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and it's not the auditor's fault. No. I have a huge affinity for most of them because it's the company going, okay, we have an auditor, quick, lock everything away and show them this. And so great. who's responsible at the end of the day? It's the company. It's humans, it comes back to us as humans. Rather than fooling you, 
why don't I bring you into the fold and you help explain what I have problems with and then I just do the right thing. I mean, you want to break computer security down, you want to break federal regulations down, it goes down to the golden rule. Do no harm and do right by others. Tell me about the do no harm philosophy yeah. before we go. So I think some of that comes about because obviously we've done a lot of work in healthcare and if you look at the Hippocratic Oath, it literally goes, I will look at a situation, if I cannot by getting involved improve that situation, then I am not going to get involved. But in security and in the industry, we get involved no matter what. Because we want to make our numbers, we want the budget, we want to do the right thing, we want to do all of this stuff. So we take the money, we take the budget, we take the numbers, we do all of these things. And potentially in some cases, we leave the company in a worse state than we found it. Sure. They got lots and lots of new technology, but they don't have enough people to deal with it. And sure. they can't really practice everything, but, but they're in better shape. They're, 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 they'll pass an audit now, but that doesn't mean they're any more bloody secure. So I think we, again, fundamentally take a step back and our job here is to protect. It isn't to get tenure for four years so that we vest our bloody stock. It isn't to see how much we can make, it's to protect. You Ideally know, that would be the case, yes. Yeah, but that's what it should be. Again, that's the, the subtle difference. If you think of security and the industry is very different than safety. OT is simple. How can I actually protect the human? Sure. How can I make sure you don't get squashed? You know, nothing happens like this. Whereas you're still toad boot, you know, exactly. you're Exactly, and it's all based on saving you the human. Whereas security is, hey, give us your checkbook. And it's just that close to yeah. disaster. Exactly, yeah. and I think we have to fundamentally change how we approach, how we look at things, and how we do things differently. I don't want to say it'll be a loss of life, but unfortunately that seems to be the only bloody way we learn. Not a good situation. Not a good situation. No. Any final thoughts before we go and I let you get back to your planning? <laughs> a lot of events tonight. My craziness and my whiskeys. Whiskeys. Um, yeah, I, I think stuff like this is great because it gets the word out. That's what I we're think trying to more do. and more and more of this is going to help. This is, I mean, in essence, this, this started off as a community. And arguably we need to go back to that. I just came from uh, B-Sides Nova, which is out of DC. Um, third time they've run it, first time in this amazing location. And it's fantastic because it's back to the grassroots. It's being able to talk to people and help them and, and just work with them and go, how can I help you? I'm here to help, I'm here to give you some crazy ideas, but how can I help you do better? Very good words. And that's, that's all we're trying to do. Well, thanks so much for coming down and talking. Thank you for really having me. Really appreciate you taking the time no, out. Thank you so much. This thank was, you. This was awesome.